Hello, Penguinauts! I'm the Beardy Penguin, and welcome to Mars Horizon, a space strategy game coming out next week, which I thankfully got an early key for, thanks to the folks over at Auroch Digital. They also sent me a bunch of really cool swag, uh, though unfortunately, for those of you that don't know, the UK is back in national lockdown, so all the swag got sent to my home address, and I'm currently stranded at uni, so my poor mum had to scan in all the launch day <laughs> instructions. But regardless, it has a ride, and we're going to jump straight in. Now, I can see there are already a few changes from the beta. Um, you guys seem to really enjoy um, the short little snippet of the beta that I I played on the channel so I thought oh definitely want to get in on the uh, get in on the action as soon as the game launches now in the beta you only had the ESA US and Russia available but it seems this time actually yeah you do start off as the Soviet Union but you also have a China and Japan available I wonder if these space programs all start in the 1950s because I mean the ESA didn't get founded uh, until a little bit later on uh, but regardless see I would normally play as the ESA right because of course I am British but, with the start of my new series, For All Kerbal Kind, my Kerbal Space Program series, which is uh, currently ongoing, once every two weeks, um, in that I've been playing as the Soviet Union and <laughs> having a lot of a lot of fun doing that, uh, making a bunch of jokes about raising the red flag across the solar system. So I think it's appropriate that we would start as the Soviets, tasked with furthering the exploration of space. I love how the ESA is, is, is specifically says peaceful exploration of space, and the Soviets just just the exploration of space. We'll we'll admit that. Uh, I assume, yeah, they all have various different bonuses, but the Soviets, minus 50% astronaut hiring cost and upkeep, no support penalty for failed missions, because we cover them up, and invalid launch windows become suboptimal launch windows. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right, whereas the US, uh, they get more contractors, they get more available astronauts. And then we got, ah, joint missions for the ESA, because they don't have any budget, uh, <laughs> and diplomatic relations. But well, basically, all just about doing joint things with other space agencies, because they have no money. Regardless, let's have a look at this customized agency thing. Oh, we can actually change the, oh, we can change the name of the Cosmodrome, can change the name, oh, wow, we can change the flags and everything. Um... Ooh, I think, I think we want to leave most of this as it actually is, if we want to really be playing as the, um... Wow, okay, you can actually, like fully create your own agency here. <laughs> We're antagonistic towards the US. Yeah, that sounds about right. Sure, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna play as the Soviets. We're not gonna customize the agency. It looks like you can pretty much create your own agency, which is very, very cool, but I wanna, I wanna play as the Soviets. We will enable the tutorial, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Off we go! Welcome, Director! The annals of space history are yet to be written. The coming decades will see humanity take its first steps away from its home planet and towards the stars. You must ensure our cosmonauts, comrade, are leading the way. Prove our technological prowess. Have the courage to push boundaries where others would falter. Know that every setback will only harden the resolve of our people to win the space race. Not like the Russian people really even that bothered about the space race. Like, <laughs> they got some early, you know, they got an early lead in, uh, but Sputnik didn't even make they barely made front page news in the Soviet Union, and they didn't really care when the US landed on the moon. Um, like, the US set the goalpost that they knew they could achieve, and then achieved it, and Russia was like, cool, well done. <laughs> I don't know, like, yeah, it's sort of blown out of proportion. Like, the, the Soviets really didn't care that much about the whole competition aspect. But, you know, whatever. Our journey to the other worlds begins today. Write our names into history. Dachi, Director. Continue. Well, here we are. Beautiful planet Earth. Sounding rockets. This is looking uh, familiar, isn't it? <laughs> We're starting in 57. That is literally the year we have just reached in, uh, in For All Kerbal Kind. So... Yeah, noticing some, some, noticing some parallels here. I think I think people would riot if I didn't play as the Soviets now in every single game I play. Why do I always end up as the communist? I'm not even a communist. Right, so we need to do a test launch and then we can go for an artificial satellite. So we need to do a suborbital flight carrying a rain of sensors and other experiments, but don't have the power to achieve orbit. So we want to do it first to increase the support for our agency and make the Americans absolutely wet themselves <laughs> by launching a little a tiny little 50 kilogram ball over their heads 
and just watch as they lose it. Honestly, I'm convinced that the Soviets launched Sputnik just for shits and giggles. Once you're ready, you select the plan mission and start planning the test launch. Hell yeah, let's do it. Let's launch it right over the Yanks' heads and... <laughs> launching a missile over the US would definitely start World War 3. Sorry if any of you who have seen gameplay already, but I mean the game is coming, well it hasn't even come out yet, so I doubt that, but I am going to have to play with the tutorial because I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do have, well I have some idea how to actually do space stuff, I am literally doing an aerospace engineering degree, so you, you might hope that I somewhat know what I'm doing, but with regards to this game, I'm basically new. Launch reliability, 25%. Yeah, that sounds roughly indicative of the early Russian space program. The great thing is, though, if something blows up, just don't tell anyone. You know, just, just if the, everyone within 100 kilometers has their windows smashed, just say it was a weapons test. Simples. Wasn't there like a similar cover story to like one of the N1 explosions? Something like the third launch of the N1 was one of the largest non-nuclear explosions in history and they <laughs> they said it was like an ammunition store blowing up or something and just nobody <laughs> fell for it. Regardless, as an experimental vehicle, the tiny rocket has very low launch reliability, but it will gain a large amount of reliability per launch, even if it explodes. Edit the name of the vehicle. Here we go. Anastasia. No, 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 no. Need to come up with something a little bit more. Accurate than that. Powder keg. Oh, wait, no, that doesn't sound Russian enough. <laughs> Powder kegski. Yes. Perfect. I don't think there's anything else we can really change here. No, this is pretty much fixed. So we'll confirm that sounding rocket. Boom. Powder kegski. Once it's been constructed, we'll receive a construction report from the engineers. Okie dokie. So now we're constructing it. Um, oh, we're not actually. We need to spend some money on it, which makes sense. Um, but once we've done that, we can actually, you know, launch it, which would be nice. So let's go for it. Vehicle approved. Your engineers will begin construction immediately. Aha! A small launch pad. The building tree is key to expanding your base and the capabilities of your agency. To be able to launch your first mission, you need to research the small launch pad. Well, let's grab that and let's get it researching. Okay, and then we've got our research up here. Well, the science we have up here. Oh, and being friendly with China apparently improves that. Baikonur in all of its glory. I don't remember there being a giant river next to Baikonur Cosmodrome, um, but what do I know? I've <laughs> all I know about it is what it looks like in Realism Overhaul of Kerbal Space Program. Is there anything we can currently build? Um, we're currently on our building limits, so yeah, no. So we're going to have to research that small launch pad before we can really construct anything. Right, well, let's advance to the next month, and I guess just... Oh, there we go, we finished our small launch pad research. Aha! So now I assume we're going to want to build that. Okay, can we construct it? Let's head over to our base screen. Small launch pad, here we go. Select from the list here and select build. Beautiful, we have enough money. Let's build this damn thing. Right, the launch pads are an essential service structure for launch vehicles, allowing maintenance work and providing data about the vehicle ahead of launch. New building can be placed wherever there is sufficient space. Building on top of removable obstructions is possible as long as you can afford the additional cost of removing the obstruction. And X and Z rotates the building. Oh, there are adjacency effects. Okay, so I assume that's something that's kind of become easier with replay value, knowing which buildings to place where and planning out the base in advance. Um, at the moment, obviously, as I said, well, this <laughs> I'm not going to have a clue what I'm doing. So, okay, so putting the launch pad right next to your HQ is obviously bad because you're going to break all the windows. Um, but putting it right next to the vehicle hangar is obviously a good thing because you can roll it right out to the launch pad. So you know what? Uh, that is exactly where we're going to place it. I'm just sort of rotating this. Um, I don't think it really matters which way around we put it. Let's put it that way around. That looks about right. Yeah, sure. Boom! Minus 2% vehicle build time if we have it right next to that. Okay, your launch pad is now constructing. Once it's completed, you'll be able to launch your first rocket! Gorgeous. Very nice. Okay, and that is going to take, ah, oh, just one month. So the, it'll be pretty much finished in time for Baldagetsky. Beautiful. Well, I guess let's get researching the first artificial satellite mission, uh, so we can get working on that sooner rather than later, as soon as Powder Kegsky has finished its inaugural flight. Let's fast forward a month, and here we go, the launch pad is complete. Oh, 
Ah, look at it in all its glory. Our engineers managed to optimize the vehicle's attitude control systems, which will improve launch stability, plus 5% launch reliability. I mean, <laughs> still not great, is it? Um, it's not looking great, but you know what? You know what? It's an early test launch, so let's go for it. Launch preparations. Can we? How many corners can we cut? <laughs> ah, so we have optimal launch dates and obviously non-optimal launch dates. So we've got optimal, suboptimal, and completely invalid. But I believe for us, invalid launch windows become suboptimal. We can launch whenever because we don't care because we're Russian. Uh, <laughs> that's a bit of a generalization, isn't it? Optimal windows are ideal launch dates. Suboptimal windows carry a reliability penalty, but can be worth risking in order to launch your mission earlier. Okay, for milestone missions, you can view the progress of the other agencies from the current mission. Okay, be careful to yeah, schedule your launch before other agencies you want to beat them to the milestone. Watch as we just launch like a moon landing like the most suboptimal time just to just get in there like a week before the Americans. And you're like in for all mankind where <laughs> they literally just launch like the third launch of the N1. Actually somehow manages to succeed with putting Alexei Leonov in the moon like two weeks before Apollo 11, which to be honest... If the Russians could have got away with that, that's exactly what they would have done. Like, the number of missions that were rushed for, like, important anniversaries or important dates. That's the reason why Laika... Well, it's not the reason why Laika died in space. Laika would have died in space regardless, the first space dog. But there was no a, even attempt to bring Laika back, right? Because they had to rush Sputnik, uh, Sputnik 2 just to coincide with some important anniversary. I do forget what it was. Anyway, um... Like, well, I mean, this is a perfect opportunity just in April, so let's go for it. Select date. Let's launch as soon as possible. Here we go. The little rocket that could. We're ahead of the rest of them. Let's do this thing. Launch! What could possibly go wrong? Barovkirksky, April 1957. What's the worst that could happen? It flips over and flies straight into the launch HQ. Oh, we've got adequate conditions. Um, oh, that actually, okay, I thought that would improve the reliability. I guess it's not like optimum conditions, is it? So we've got an 18% chance of the entire thing exploding, 55% chance of something going wrong, 20% uh, chance of success, and 7% chance of something something happy happening. We've got a 7% chance of us finding the, the spirit of Lenin in the clouds above us. Well. I think that's worth the risk. Oh, I love the sort of cinematic style. Watch as it explodes before it even leaves the pad. Oh, no, okay, it's actually cleared the tower. There are those who said this day would never come. What have they to say now? Oh, no, they were right. They <laughs> well, that went about as well as could be expected. <laughs> <laughs> there are no failures, there are only, well, rapid unscheduled disassemblies. No, 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 there are no, there are no failures, just remove that one from the books, it never happened. We haven't launched a single rocket yet. Just don't tell anyone, it's fine. It's fine, but the reliability's gone up, so maybe next time. I mean, <clears throat> the first time we attempt to launch a Sony rocket, it'll uh, it'll go flawlessly. Yeah, I think we can get another test launch in before our uh, first shot at an artificial satellite. So, you know what? We're going to plan another mission. Right. Uh, we have enough money. Go for it. Build it. Boom. That's going to take two months to build this one, unfortunately. Ooh, after analyzing data from your recently failed test launch, researchers have identified several improvements that can be made to your booster technology. Sometimes we learn more when the things blow up. Exactly, exactly. The correct attitude to have. Not that anything blew up, of course. <laughs>, Laughs nervously in the light of the political officer staring over my shoulder. Reached Erewhon, dawn of space flight. Ha! Uh -huh. I've unlocked the moon. The moon has just appeared. Hello. Just looked up in the sky, watching the launching rocket, and we realized, hey, there's something else up there. There's like a big ball. Maybe we should land on that, you know? The moon can now be selected in the solar system screen where a bunch of missions to the moon will be shown. Aha. So we can now have a look. Ah, look at you. Lunar orbit. Well, that is uh, quite a way away. So we finished our artificial satellite. 
research, now we need to research our actual payload. But in the meantime, um, we'll complete powder keg ski. Oh, and we finished off Sputnik Research, a small, simple satellite containing a radio transmitter protected within a pressurized metal shell. Regardless, though, Powder Case 2 is now ready for launch. New and improved. Oh, 45%. Okay, that's a fair bit better. It's basically a coin toss as to whether this thing goes well or not. Oh, God, everyone's launching this month. Okay. Well, fingers crossed. Uh, if we launch the same month as them, like, can we just launch like a day before them? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure if that'll work uh, quite that way, but, you know, we'll see. Boom! Yeah, so we need the, obviously, we need the R7 booster and we need the R7 uh, upper stage. So let's reset to the booster first. So, yeah, it's still going to be a while before we can get building the uh, artificial satellite mission. Ah. Oh. What a beautiful day. Hopefully a day before the Amerikanskis do the same thing. <laughs> then again, like maybe their launches will fail. Who knows? I mean, ours had very, very low chance of actually succeeding. We launched well ahead of their first launches. So, fingers crossed. And regardless, we have good conditions as well. So the chance of this going well, they're fairly decent. Zva. I need to remember. I need to remember these numbers so I can actually <laughs> ascribe numbers to my missions. Ah, what a beautiful sight. Okay, fingers crossed. Does it get through Max Q? Last time it disintegrated. Oh, yay! Flawless. Secure launch. Beautiful. That obviously improves our reliability, but also we've completed that milestone, which should, yeah, give us a bunch of support. We can now begin planning our artificial satellite. Although I don't, I, oh no, we need to, okay, we need to build the payload before we can actually build the rocket. So that makes sense. So we've got standard Sputnik, we've got comm Sputnik, we've got prototype Sputnik. Reduced build cost. Ooh. <laughs> Tempting. And we've got power Sputnik. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I still have no clue what I'm doing. So... I'm just going to go with, with standard Sputnik. Um, I don't think you can really go wrong with that. Yeah. Select payload. Let's go with that. So, okay, we're going to begin constructing Sputnik. Um, and then hopefully we'll have researched the relevant booster parts before we actually finish it. Oh, look at that beauty. Shiny boy. Okay, so its scientific instrumentation was improved. But the additional complexity will increase development time of the launch vehicle. Hmm, not great, but the payload reliability is pretty high, so... That's always going to be a good thing, right? I think we've researched all the things we actually need. Well, let's select ourselves the R7 Sputnik upper stage. Early liquid fuel upper stage capable of carrying a variety of small payloads. I'll grab ourselves the R7 booster. So we need to make sure that we can actually launch the upper stage. We'll just select that. Ah, isn't she beautiful? The R7. Although, I mean... The R7 didn't actually have an upper stage, at least the one that launched Sputnik. It was it was literally the boosters and the core, and the whole thing went into orbit. Um, so I don't want to say inaccuracy because obviously it's it's a game mechanic to have to research upper stage and booster combinations, um, and obviously the whole point is well, this is an upper stage that was later added to the R7 rocket because obviously. <laughs> needed an upper stage eventually, but uh, but yeah, the R7 that launched Sputnik didn't, didn't actually have a, an upper stage, but you know, we'll forgive them for that. What should we name the rocket though? That's the important thing here. Okay, so I tried to set the workers of the world have nothing to lose but their chains as the name of the mission, but that uh, obviously didn't quite fit within the character limit. So I've just gone for breaking the chains, because we're breaking the chains of gravity and, of course, of capitalism. So let's save that design, actually. I think it's I think it's a beautiful design. Boom. And confirm. Glorious. Let's get building this damn thing. It's going to almost bankrupt us, but, you know, whatever. Go for it. 
So it seems like everyone except the US completed the test launch milestone. Ah, oh, poor Americanskis. Even Europe's doing better than you. Tragic. Right, let's <laughs> maybe research some new buildings. What's this? Technological hub of your agency. Greatly improved scientific yields from missions. Let's get researching that. That sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> oh, poor NASA. Poor NASA. Still, it seems that uh, we're way ahead of everyone else when it comes to the artificial satellite, which is, you know, historically accurate after all. Well, we might as well do some vehicle research while we're waiting for some more money to build our research center. So I'm going to research the Algol just because it's cheap and cheerful. I mean, it's just objectively inferior to the Jupiter, but you can build it in two thirds of the time and half the cost. So that's exactly the sort of booster that we like the sound of. In the meantime, let's build a research lab. Get ourselves a bit more science. I think it might be an idea to put it like that, because then we can have things adjacent to both of these buildings. I, I feel like, you know, to maximize adjacency bonuses and and the like. Um, oh, we can't actually afford to place it there because of the instru <laughs> instructions. We literally have to place it here. Okay, well, that's fine. Boom. Let's get building. Let's keep researching. Let's grab ourselves the Scout booster, because, again, that is really cheap. And it can pretty much really cheaply put small payloads into Earth orbit. Although we might want to research Able um, if we want to send stuff into lunar orbit. But you know what? Yeah, we'll go for the Scout upper stage. So we're just building really cheap, cheerful, solid um, launch vehicles. If we, you know, want to actually do that. The Soviet Union seems sort of allergic to uh, solid rocket boosters throughout history. Ooh, okay, this is, this is worrying. Um, breaking the change is complete in two months. Let's have a look at our funding review though. Agency's performance over the last 12 months has been reviewed and your budget has been adjusted accordingly. Yeah! Money, 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 money. Not that we care about such things in the Soviet Union. Aha! And we finished our research on the scout. I mean, we're already behind history because Sputnik was launched in 1957. So <laughs> we're already lagging a little bit, but that's fine. Um, we'll catch up soon enough, I am sure. Let's get this rocket test pad going and get that under construction uh, sooner rather than later, because now we actually have enough funds to build that. And we finished our research lab. Ha ha ha. Unlocks mission training science. That's interesting. Oh, and we've also finished our beauty of a launch vehicle. 10% launch reliability minus 10% payload reliability. Right, let's let's launch this thing as fast as we can. Need to make sure we get it into space ahead of everybody else. If we launched in March and it blew up, could we build another one in two months? Um, that's the question I'm asking, and I, th I think the answer is no. We couldn't. So there is really no point... Oh, I don't want to launch in June. Because then the... Ah, that's when the Japanese are launching. I really don't think it's worth taking the 20% launch reliability penalty. So I think we'll launch in June. That also gives us a 20% science bonus to the whole mission. Um, so let's go for it. We'll select that date. And, uh, yeah. Confirm that setup. Yay, rocket test pad. China's launching the artificial satellite in six months. Okay, well, we should beat... Everyone except Japan. Imagine that. <laughs> World's first satellite launched by Japan. That's uh, certainly some rather radical alternate history. Like, I thought for all Kerbal kind was alternate history, but damn, this is uh, it's getting out of hand. More launch reliability, cheaper vehicles, we'll do that. I mean, we can't actually select the launch vehicle reliability focus since we already chose the science one but that's quite all right let's get the assembly facility though uh, that gives us payload reliability i think we really want to be building up our base around now um, and we can afford all of these buildings so let's get them all researched uh, as quick as we can china proposes research exchange china's proposes an exchange of technology research they're offering to share their spacecraft assembly facility research if we share our research on research lab yeah, sure, I'll do that. Boom, we don't mind collaborating with our, our fellow communist state. Did, were China and the Soviet Union friendly at this point in time? They've sort of had a bit of a love-hate relationship throughout history, <laughs> to put it lightly. We should probably start researching the next mission for after Sputnik. 
So we'll, yeah, change research because we've, well, finished that research. So we'll start researching Animal in Space in Sputnik 2. Because uh, the R7 is capable of launching that. And then we'll research Mission Control. Get some multiple missions on the go. Still there, look at that. Assembly facility. Ah, uh, you see, if we had built the lab the other orientation, we could have got a triple adjacency bonus here, which is what I was talking about earlier. Um, alas. We didn't have enough money to clear some trees. <laughs> Budget cuts, am I right? I'm feeling putting it there. Boom! Let's get building. I'm sure I already have people screaming at me <laughs> how poorly my base is being constructed. Japan's launching the artificial satellite next month. Okay, so are we! Fingers crossed! Artificial satellite, June 1958. <laughs> what if we launch at exactly the same time as Japan? It's like, who can get into orbit fast enough? Crank up the engines! <laughs> Race to space quite a, quite literally a space race. Let's do this. I just yeah I don't think it was worth Taking a 20% hit to our launch reliability just to get in a month before the Japanese I mean their launch still might fail right so fingers crossed breaking the chains of gravity and capitalism Maybe that should be like a <laughs> Space program motto. Oh good conditions as well. That's looking like a Hey, we got the perf- honestly, I would rather it be that than 100%. This rocket has been blessed by niceness. Let's go! I really love this game's art style. It really does look gorgeous at times. Okay, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Here we go, here we go. Please don't explode! Yeah! Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, okay, we got some battery damage on launch, but thankfully, it's still reached orbit. Oh, gorgeous, it is truly a great day for the Soviet space program.